It's Madden NFL 24, where division rivals will clash in the NFC North. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears. All that and more coming up next. They say summer is the time to live in Chicago. Well, that's extended into autumn as we are ready to roll under blue skies at Soldier Field. Today, we've got what's always a hard-hitting battle in the NFC North as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Chicago Bears. With my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. A CD, the Chicago Bears, they come off a tough year at 3-14. and 14, The most losses in franchise history. What can they look to build around here in 2023? Well, it starts with their quarterback, and you know that he is a heck of a player for them. But they've got to get better on the defensive side of the ball. Head coach, defensive background, he's trying to amass that kind of talent and become the monsters of the midway once again. Meanwhile, for the visiting Vikings, we know all about the skilled players on offense, but they're looking to make up some ground on the defensive side of the ball this season as they were second from the bottom in total defense a year ago. What they want to do is find a way to be more consistent on that side of the ball and not rely on making big plays late in games in order to secure victories. They want to be able to stop people earlier. That's what they're looking to do in 2023. Here's the punter, Trenton Gill, now to do the honors, and off we go here at Soldier Field. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. So here are the Vikings set to go to work, and they're led by the leading passer in the NFC a season ago. Now in his 12th year, sixth as a Viking, Kirk Cousins. Minnesota's new coaching staff really leaned on Cousins for leadership and production. And the longtime vet was up to the pressure. 29 touchdowns, 4,500 yards, and a 13 win season. His best as a starter. Captain Kirk, he's quietly been one of the league's most productive passers the last few seasons. First play and a first pass for Cousins. And that's going to be incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion. Now it's second and 10. Cousins. His throw incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hope they can come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. So two incompletions have led them to an early third and ten. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. That was the first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. Back deep, Trent Taylor. They juked him. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards, and the Bears take over. So here come the Bears to take over on offense behind their third-year quarterback, former Ohio State Buckeye Charles, Justin Fields. We all knew Fields was an incredible athlete coming out of college and last season. He unleashed it upon the NFL, ran for over 1,100 yards, and would have broken the quarterback's single-season record if he had played the full season. He also threw 17 touchdown passes, and that's the next jump for him, more consistency as a passer. The Bears in good field position to start out first and 10 at their own 37. A man who led the league in yards per carry last year, it's Khalil Herbert. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. 
That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Now an option play on second down. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Pretty good job there defensively of stringing that one out. Yeah, you've got a quarterback who's waiting and waiting for something to develop, and it just never materialized. And down he went behind the line of scrimmage. Throwing on third down, Fields. He's got his running back out of the backfield. But he is out of bounds, but not before. He's inside the 30. Well, that's how you convert on third down with an explosive gain of 34. A very early momentum changer there. Actually a dream killer for the defense because they forced a third down. Felt like they had a good chance to get off the field defensively. And then they got hit with that big play. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Fields now to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Well, that's absolutely going to fire this defense up. They made it their mission to deny that completion, and they came through with a nice hit and knocked it incomplete. Second and 10. Here's Fields. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. All about the offense so far this drive, putting something sustained together. But the defense, they responded on that play. Second and manageable became third and long. The drive marching to the end zone is one play from stalling out. And he's going to go down again. And Daniil Hunter, he's the one who gets in there and brings him down to the ground. They'll make that a second sack here on their first drive out defensively. And not to get ahead of ourselves, but they're, they're on pace for double-digit sacks at this point. Well, they're going to have to find a way to tamp that down, aren't they? So if you're the play caller, you're telling your quarterback maybe some screens, maybe some draws, hard count, use your voice inflection a little bit, anything to try to slow that pressure down. So pretty good opening drive that'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They won at six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys are good getting down the field. That's gotta give them a little bit of hope. The good things are in store here today. Trenton Gill to kick this away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. Hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt, they're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now Cousins gets this into the hands of Nikhil Harry. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride. And he was able to run free after the catch. 
First carry now for Alexander Madison. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. That runs successful in large part because they had a lot of extra help blocking up front. Yeah, you've got guys who can do that very, very well. In addition, they can catch the football. So sometimes when they line up with three tight ends, it's not necessarily to run it, and that gives you an advantage when you do decide to barrel off the line of scrimmage and block people downfield. So the completion good for seven there, and it'll be second down. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker. And the Bears will have the football as this is taken up past the 30. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Now Herbert to start the drive. Able to avoid him at the 40. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Nothing too fancy, just a carry up the middle, but a successful carry up the middle against his 3-4 defense. And to be able to do that, what do you have to control? The nose guard, right? Got to be able to move him, otherwise you're not getting anything up the middle. Nice job by the center. Got a little help from one of his friends playing guard. And Field's going to have the first down before sliding to a halt to avoid the contact. A good pick up there, 26 yards. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised, as we just saw there. On first and 10, it's Herbert. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Looking to throw on second down. Fields over the middle and that's caught by Kinnett. Fields to Kinnett there for a Chicago first. That was a not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Herbert powering up the middle. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Now we're going to get a stoppage. Appears to be an injured bear on the field. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Here's second and ten. They run with a fourth-round pick, Roshan Johnson. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Five yards, now it's third and five. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Back to throw, Fields. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Bears are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they've had a great 
great impressive drive going here and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. And they'll try the option on first and goal. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields, a four-yard touchdown scamper. And they are able to add on to their advantage. And maybe there, that was just a case of completely overlooking the guy holding the football. It certainly felt like it, didn't it? Because on my checklist, okay, as a defender, <laughs> QB's last. Running back, fullback, heck, jet sweeps nowadays. Before you even get to thinking about the quarterback might actually keep it. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and the lead grows to 10 0. to the 25 and now out comes Minnesota they'll look to get something started they need to down 10 nothing early as they've got it first and 10 They'll start on the ground with Madison. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. From the 25, here's second down. Here's Cousins. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. And that's good for a gain of six. And this will wind up being a third and three. From the gun, here's Cousins. That is caught. And he will have the Vikings first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. Oftentimes, we think of those tough yards as grinding yards that a running back has to pick up. How about the tight end there picking up the first down in that situation? That's what he's there for, right? Big fella, get it to him. Let him fight off some people and pick up the necessary yardage. On first and ten, Cousins. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. There's no denying they want to get him involved. That's already the fifth time that they've looked his way in this first quarter. So that tells me defensively that they want to insist on going in that direction. Make sure you get your best people in the area to try and take that away. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Cousins again. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And he'll go down to the ground at the 39, and obviously that's well short of the first. So the completion good for just three. And that's going to make it fourth down. That pattern and scheme was well defensed on third down. He tried to just sprint from one side of the field to the other, and they got it to him quickly. But no chance at yards after the catch there, and they stop him short. 
44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Well, I'm not quite sure how he got away from that first tackler, but he won't even be able to get it back to the line of scrimmage there as the defense rallies behind him. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Now Fields. Open man is Komet, the tight end. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it brings up third and five now. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Well, they came up with points in their first two possessions, but it looks like they'll come up empty here on their third drive. The defense finally starting to get locked into them a little bit. Might have to go a little bit deeper into their playbook on their next possession. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at the 40. Play action now, Cousins. He's going to look deep down the field. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete. But the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. So a costly penalty yardage-wise as that will move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball. And if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. Here's a give to Madison running right. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Now a second and six. Another carry now. And he lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble. That could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. Hey, what's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover for his squad. Throwing. Cousins. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he will be out of bounds here on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter as they go to work on a first and goal. They'll go Madison up the middle. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. 
this is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. Second and goal from inside the five. Again, Madison. But he will go backwards as he stopped for a loss. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. Third and goal for Cousins. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Brings up fourth down, solid coverage by the Bears' D. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. The kick by Joseph is good, and they get themselves on the board here. It's 10-3. So a good job there to kind of weather the storm in that first quarter and come back with their first points of the ball game. Yeah, you hate to be coming from behind early on, but you're exactly right. They took some time, able to move the ball, and now it's back to a 10-3 game. Joseph now to kick this one away. And he returns this to the 22. The Chicago offense set to get started. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 22. They'll try and start this drive in the air. A quick throw there is incomplete. He was trying to find Equinemius St. Brown, and it's second down. Give left side here for Herbert. And he can muster only a couple here to the 24. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. This offense so far on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. Dean Lowry in there to get him for a loss of three, and it will be fourth down. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground in this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match, and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he squirts free, you've got someone to tackle him. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. 
Off the play fake, Cousins. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Tyreek Stevenson picks it off, and he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw or maybe the ball's tipped or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. Here's a give to Herbert, and he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. From the 35, here's second and three. Herbert once more it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Herbert making a nice play there, coming off a 700-yard campaign, despite making just one start in 2022. Played a big part in the Bears becoming the fifth team in NFL history to rush for 3,000 yards in a season. Herbert now on the option. And some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. That good for 19 and a first down. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. From the four, it's second and a couple. A toss left side for Herbert. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up first and goal. Ordinarily in short yardage, most people don't run a toss because it takes a little bit longer to develop. But some teams see it as a very physical type run because the amount of people that get out in front of the runner, offensive linemen, tight ends, sometimes an extra back, they like to run that play there and try and run over people. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. Deontay Foreman punching it in from a yard away. And the Bears have taken a two-touchdown lead now. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one-yard line, and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind-melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat. Chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. Santos with the extra point, and the lead is now 17-3. So the drive there took six plays, and it was finished off by Deontay Foreman on the touchdown run. Touchdown. Here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. Kenny Nwagu now out of his end zone. And this return to net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Well, still early in this one, Charles, but the last time this offense was out there, they threw their first interception of the ball game, so try to avoid repeating that mistake here on this drive. And to put a positive spin on it, at least it happened in the first half and not in a close game in the fourth quarter, but you're absolutely right, partner. One of the last things this offensive quarterback wants to witness again in this game. 
Kind of an obvious question, Charles, but anything you try to avoid after your first pick or you say it's one interception, we're still in the first half, I'm going to do the same thing. I think you want to avoid playing scared, you know, and put it into the mind of the quarterback that you've lost confidence in him. Make sure you get some throws that he's going to be able to complete, make him feel good about himself, and continue to run your offense. Second and 10 now from the 27. Throwing his cousins. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. First down, here's Cousins. And his throw here is incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. They'll throw again, Cousins. And his throw is gonna be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Cousins. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. Already up two touchdowns. How about that drive killer of a sack there to add to their good play? This offense coming away with no points now when some kind of score was desperately needed. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. So a change of possession here on the punt. We switch the attention now to Khalil Herbert as this offense comes out for their next drive. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 18. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. To throw his fields. And this is taken in by Darnell Moody. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Fields to Moody for the Chicago first. And now at this point in the first half, you've got to realize as an offense, you're not going to get it all back in one fell swoop. This is going to be about sustained drives and making sure you finish with points. And that's a good throw there for a first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Going on the ground with Homer. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Now it's Fields. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. And this offense on third down today, two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. They'll run with Herbert. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. 
I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops and tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Yeah, you did. That line's not eating tofu, I'll tell you that much for free. Oh, the return is Powell. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 24. He'll set up to throw from the gun into the hands of the rookie Jordan Addison. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. But I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, this defense is going to have to finish the job. There's still a second half that they have to play, but so far, an absolute total effort. They've disrupted the passing game, stressed the pocket for the quarterback. They forced him into errant throws. Everything they're doing has been executed well. Throwing again, Cousins on second and ten. He'll find Osborne here. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Well, this hasn't really been a first half to remember on either side of the ball, but I think this kind of makes this an important drive. You'd love to get this back to a one-score game if you can, and that's good work there to get some yardage here and pick up the first down. A first down throw for Cousins. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. That'll go for a gain of seven at its second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. From the 42-yard line, here's second and three. Cousins to throw it. Looks again for T.J. Hawkinson, and he's got him again. And Hawkinson going to have the Vikings first down as he'll get this down to the 35-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations. But a guy of his size, can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. To the air again, it's Cousins. Catch is made by Harry. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 17-yard line. Give him 18 on the play. But certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the red zone now, Cousins. And he's gonna go down. He's sacked back in the 24. The Vikings gonna signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Cousins. And that's incomplete. This is a half where not just the coverage, 
where the entire defense is setting the tone in this game. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down to throw Cousins. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Brings up fourth down, solid coverage by the Bears' D. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. Joseph's got it. And a second field goal here gets him back with an 11 now. It's 17 to 6. So the three points there in CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Joseph now to kick this one away. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. And the Bears going to get one more possession in this first half. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. seconds remain in this first half as they come up here first and ten. From the gun, here's Fields. That's complete right side to commit. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. A gain there on 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA this Sports Halftime This has certainly been a fun report. one to watch so Coach. far. We knew this was going to be a battle, and we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Set to resume, here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid and he's dropped at the 18. And the Bears offense set to go to begin the third quarter. And they've got the lead CD. What do you expect from them in this second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. Starting on the ground with Herbert. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. From the 20, here's the second and eight. The 
they'll go again with Herbert. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. Now a third and six. Out of the gun, Fields. Dropping this underneath with Herbert. And yeah, they're able to stop him short. On third and six, they'll only pick up four. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Here's Powell on the return. A beautiful fake. So a good punt, but a solid 12-yard return. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And, Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at the 40. He'll drop to throw. Over the middle and complete to Addison. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. Now they're going to get about three here out of this first down run, and that'll bring up second and seven. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. From the gun, here's Cousins. Slant route, and he's got Addison. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 34-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a give to Madison. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. On first and 10, Cousins. This is Alexander Madison out of the backfield with it. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really onto something there. In this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. And that play, it wound up losing yardage. Now a second down throw for Cousins. And it's incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Now Cousins. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by Jalen Johnson. And the Bears are going to get the football back at their own 17. And this defense, Charles, coming up with another interception. They have really done an excellent job of locking up these receivers. Yeah, they're really on fire. They are actually doing what they talk about all the time, which is plastering to receivers when they're in their zones. They didn't give up a touchdown in the first half. Haven't done so here in this half either. Blanket in the field going all the way back to the opening drive. And they come up with a pick right there. Oh, 
Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now Fields. And this will be caught by Mooney. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun on third down, Fields. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. They dial up the corner blitz that time, and it delivers to the tune of a nine-yard loss. Like how they've started the third quarter here. They force a punt on the first drive, and after this sack, it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well. Absolutely. Maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. And out now come the Vikings. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 40. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Throw left side is complete on the diving effort. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. Hey, did you have one of those backyards that you had one of those, like, mats or pits like you have for high jumpers? And, you know, you had your friends throw the ball and you tried to make the spectacular catches? I didn't need a mat. <laughs> you, you just did it with the ground? Absolutely. That explains your Concrete. toughness. That <laughs> explains your toughness right there because I think that guy was raised just like you. What a catch. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Another good completion on the drive as the Vikings have a first down. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're boiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Here's Cousins. Throw left side, and Osborne has it. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up second down. On the toss, Madison. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? They got the ball to the outer third of the field, but they could not seal that edge and lost yardage. And I love how you brought that up because sealing the edge is often a function of the offensive tackle on the line of scrimmage, oftentimes a tight end, maybe your H back, someone to set the edge of the line of scrimmage to give them a spot to get to. If you're not able to do that, you're not able to turn the corner. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. What a job by this defense all game long. They've come together and really said, no one's crossing our goal line, and they're definitely not going to start right now. You can just see the dejection. Feel like nothing is working offensively. 
The kick by Joseph is good, and that'll make this an eight-point game. So three points, maybe not a grand prize at this stage, but it does get them back within one score. It certainly does, because now they stay within shouting distance, so that means everyone on your sideline stays engaged in this game. They know they still have a shot. Joseph now to kick this one away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. And this will be a Bears first down as he gets it up past the 35. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. Solid run up the middle. What made it successful? Well, what you have to do is control the nose guard, but sometimes you don't do it by blocking him. You do it by influencing him. Get him moving to one side or the other and hit him back on the opposite. On first down, it's Fields. That's complete to Mooney. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that will bring up second down. just a yard when we talk about defenders specifically linebackers keeping their eyes in the right spot he had that eye down the entire time and you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you they try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place but you're right about that one he correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play and he can't get rid of it he's taken down this is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Going to run with Madison again. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That second down play, that's a minus four. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Here comes third down at seven. Maybe a free play here, Cousins. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. 
And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. 55 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. He's going to loft it deep right sideline. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. If I'm making excuses, and I am, sometimes the sun can be difficult on a ball like that. That looked like it was going to be right there, but it's in and out of his hands. And a potential big play goes by the wayside. This one caught by Osborne right side. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. On third down, Cousins. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. Oh, they had a good chance to get off the field defensively there. If they could just wrap up, it's going to be a fourth down. But instead, they can't get him on the deck, and he allows them to pick up the first down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. On the handoff, it's Madison. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to hell and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run. But the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Second down, Cousins. Over the middle, that's caught by Harry. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll leave him with third and a full yard to go. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Now they'll try and set up the quarterback draw here. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Okay, you and I are sitting up here getting ready to analyze whether they should go for it or not. Did you see the quarterback just point to the sideline and say, uh-uh, everybody back, I've got this call. Well, you knew this side of the field, they're in plus territory, fourth and one. He wasn't coming off the field. No, he wasn't coming off the field. He wasn't let the offense go with him at all. He said, we're staying out here, and we're picking this one up. That's some leadership right there. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down and six. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. 
oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the past. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Play fake. Cousins. And this one incomplete. And another throw that really could have been, maybe should have been intercepted. That would have been number four. Instead, it's fourth down. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. They're going for it. Here's Madison. And try to push his way forward, but I think he's going to be short. And he is short. He needed two. He only got one. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at the 34. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Ball on the 39. Here's second and five. Fields. Locates Mooney on the out route. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. The Bears on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. A play fake. Now fields to throw. And he can't find a receiver. And he's brought down. Marcus Davenport, the first rounder out of UTSA with a sack. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. They've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. Fighting throw, he's got space. And he'll be taken down, but they've got this one up to the 35-yard line. 87 yards here for Madison. He's got a first down. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Cousins to throw it. He's got his tight end over the middle, TJ Hawkinson. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. From the 43, here's second and two. the play fake. Cousins completes this to Addison out left. 
And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 44-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. On play action, Cousins. Catch is made by Harry. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. And that's a much-needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out of this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Play action now. Cousins out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. Here's Madison running on first down. There's a nice move. And he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I like the call. Inside the red zone, running the toss. Why? They want to get to the edges. They want to see if guys who don't normally make a lot of tackles are willing to actually do that. That usually means the guy's at the cornerback position. Now a second down throw for Cousins. That is caught inside the five. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. First and goal, a touchdown and a two-point conversion here are musts. Trying the power game with Ham. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Now, that's the defense that they were looking for, being able to get extra bodies to the point of attack to deal with the big guy carrying the ball. You really don't want to be in a position where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him. Madison diving for the end zone and he'll get there. Touchdown. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't hang their head right here. They still got a chance to come out with the lead if they make a play. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. Cousins will try and throw. That's caught. And he'll be tackled short of the goal line. But there is a flag down. Let's see what the call is here. Okay, so the penalty on the outside for illegal touching, and they'll have to come back and try it again. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Oh, a good looking return set up here. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. 
Their defense forced the turnover on downs. They've got the lead. They're in good shape, but can't go into a shell here, right? Still got to be careful. Yeah, because they're still a long way away from kneel down time. So they've got to work on getting first downs, keep the sticks moving, right? Keep the clock going, and above all, ball security. Don't turn it over. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. Just a gain of a couple there. And it'll be second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. On second down, a run with Herbert. And he'll take this one from about four up to the 40. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Pastor, you said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. Two minutes remain, and that's our score differential as well. Two points here in the fourth quarter. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Herbert once more, and he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Now a timeout called for by the defense. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Second down and six now. And off right side for Herbert. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. Third down, Herbert. And he is going to lose yardage here. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped him, bringing up fourth down. Here comes the Bears punter now as he's on to kick it away. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted and spotted at the 14-yard line. So Cousins and the Vikings down 17-15, a minute seven remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Here's Cousins. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw is made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. But just over a minute to go in the football game. Second and ten. Cousins to throw. Pass complete. It's Hawkinson. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Quarterbacks have so many options when they have a four vertical route because they can hit any one of those four at any time, often for a big game. But to me, the key is don't lock in on any one of them. It's best for him to look in one direction and throw in another. Cousins. Complete to Addison on the out route. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40.
Mark, you got to like what they're doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pickup. Well, this offense cannot stop the clock now. No timeouts remaining as they come up here first down. Tension building. Here's Greg Joseph. This from long, very long range. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Seconds on the clock, this for the win. And no, wide left. It's no good. And a tough finish to this one. Charles, in these lower scoring games, you know it better than anybody. Yeah, points are at such a premium, but taking care of the football is king. They play turnover free from whistle to whistle, and they come through with a victory. Yeah, and that's what won them the game because even doing it that way, being that clean partner, they weren't able to really run away with this game. So that tells us just how important it was to make sure you played mistake-free football that led to the victory.